What's up, YouTube? It's Joel. Things are heating up in Congress over this reconciliation package and the bipartisan bill. We actually have the full text of that bipartisan bill, which is 2,702 pages. Wow, that's a lot. But more concern now is over the huge trillion dollar reconciliation package. You know, the package with all the stimulus checks, the increases for Social Security, the Medicare expansion, and the monthly stimulus checks for the kids, and so much more. Joe Manchin is now saying he can't guarantee this bill will pass, but the progressives are ramping up their support for more monthly stimulus checks as well as a larger, bolder reconciliation package, which is causing some fights within the Democratic Party, which we'll get to in just a moment. But then we have a huge clash between Nancy Pelosi, the leader of the House, and President Biden over the eviction moratorium and who should be the one to extend the freeze on evictions. This is your stimulus and economic news update and I hope you're having a wonderful day. So I just want to say thank you for all the subscribers, but we are trying to hit 55,000 subs and I'm going to give away another $500 on this channel once we do. And all you have to do is these three things. Number one, click the like button for this video. Number two, subscribe or be subscribed to the channel. And number three, comment on this video on one of the topics that we talk about. But I really appreciate everyone's support and that's why I'm doing this. I wouldn't be here without you. But please, if anyone asks you for personal info or to contact them on WhatsApp, it is fake, it is not me, so please don't do it. So we are about to dive into the latest details on this bipartisan infrastructure deal and the $3.5 trillion reconciliation package. So the bipartisan senators released the legislative text for the bipartisan infrastructure bill this past weekend, which came from them actually working through the weekend to rush and bring the amendments in place to process this bill. And they're expecting to vote on it and bring the final passage by the end of the week. So this is good news because it leads us into the reconciliation bill. But the bipartisan group of senators negotiated the deal that was released totaling a, a total amount of 2,702 pages. Now, this legislation will authorize more than half a trillion dollars in new spending to improve the country's roads, bridges, and other physical infrastructures. But Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine said on the Senate floor that the legislation would be the most significant investment in our infrastructure since the construction of the interstate highway system. And then we had Chuck Schumer who said, given how bipartisan the bill is and how much work has already been put into getting the details right, I believe the Senate can quickly process the relevant amendments and pass this bill in a matter of days. So this is falling right in line with what he talked about last week. So some of the top priorities are $110 billion for roads and bridges, $39 billion for public transit, $66 billion for the rail system through the U.S., and $55 billion for water and wastewater infrastructure. So they are looking to pass this bipartisan bill as quickly as possible because it gets them to the next bill which I think more people are interested in because it actually has more direct stimulus. Chuck Schumer said once those votes are completed, the Senate will move to the Democrats' much larger spending effort, the $3.5 trillion proposal to address what some have called human infrastructure. That measure includes funding for child care, tax breaks and health care and so much more and there are efforts that include even more wide-ranging provisions on immigration reform now progressives are going all the way they want it to be as big and bold as possible and they are even wanting to include twelve hundred dollar monthly stimulus checks for most americans and that includes those on ssi ssdi and social security but that's not all they're wanting to go bigger and bolder than what's already been presented. We had Congressional Progressive Caucus Leader Representative Pramila Jayapal who said, progressives have been clear from the beginning. A small and narrow bipartisan infrastructure bill does not 
have a path forward in the House of Representatives unless it has a reconciliation package with our priorities alongside it. What priorities? Direct stimulus to Americans, which to a lot of people sounds great because you're looking for a forced stimulus check. They're looking for the increase of Social Security by $200 per month for all Social Security recipients. They're looking for the extension of four years for the monthly child tax credits that are being paid out in monthly payments. So lots of money is going directly to Americans, which to me, if anything's going to go to to anybody, it should be to our own. But now, Joe Manchin, who's a moderate Democrat, has dropped another bomb of news on us. He said, I can't really guarantee anybody. I have not guaranteed anybody on any of these pieces of legislation. Would we like to do more? Yes. You can do what you can pay for. This is paid for. Our infrastructure bill is all paid for. We don't have a debt that we're going to incur more debt and throwing into it. He also added, as far as reconciliation goes, it should be looked at the same. That's why I said we're going to get the budget resolution. Let's start the process and then see where it goes from there. So with this news, the process is getting started to get this bill going, but you have two sides who are pulling on the price tag. You've got the far left progressives who are saying spin, spin, spin. And then you've got the moderate Democrats who are on board for reconciliation, but are saying not so much spending. Even Kirsten Cinema said she does not like the $3.5 trillion price tag. She wants it scaled down. But all in all, they aren't arguing over whether it's going to be done but more on the cost. They need 50 votes to make this reconciliation happen. And right now, only two people are keeping it from literally being fast-tracked as quickly as possible because they want a smaller price tag. Now, whether it's 3.5 trillion or 2.5 trillion, we're still going to see some huge stimulus coming from the Democrats that will be passed in the next few weeks with everything being pushed through as quickly as possible by the leader of the Senate, Chuck Schumer. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. So now we head into the clash that's happening between Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and President Biden. So right now the eviction ban has elapsed and many people are being evicted from their homes because th that they've been living in because rent has not been paid for some reason or another. Now there has been a ban on, evic on evictions because of the pandemic. And this law that was put in place was keeping landlords from removing tenants that weren't paying. So now we are in a big clash between Nancy Pelosi, who's saying that the White House needs to extend the pause on evictions. But then the White House is saying that Congress needs to do it. So Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her leadership team urged President Biden to immediately renew and extend the eviction moratorium until October 18th after the House Democrats failed to marshal the votes to prevent its lapse this weekend. Then we had the White House who said it could not extend the eviction ban and urged Congress to do it. So we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. The senior Democrats said it is clear that the Senate is not able to extend the ban and any legislation in the House therefore will not be sufficient. Action is needed and it must come from the administration. So they're putting it on the White House to get this done or Biden to extend the pause. But this is what the White House came back and said. They said it would let the ban lapse because the Supreme Court indicated in late June that legislation would be necessary to extend it a fifth time. So literally, Biden and the White House cannot do it because the Supreme Court said they couldn't. And they couldn't get enough votes in the, in the Congress like the House or the Senate to get it done. So basically, it has to be a law that goes through the Senate and the House in order for it to go into place. Now, some are looking to add this to the reconciliation package so that tenants aren't evicted. But by the time the bill passes, there will be a ton of people that are evicted from their homes. Now, there was $46.5 billion of rental assistance from one of the last relief packages that was allocated to help those in need of rental assistance. But that's where it was up to the state 
and local governments to disperse out those funds to people to make sure that they wouldn't be evicted and they could pay their rent. But the senior Democrats requested that the Treasury Department shed light on how state and local governments could more efficiently deliver the $46.5 billion in rental assistance Congress authorized last December because as of the end of June, only 6.5% of those funds had actually been dispersed. So someone is dropping the ball on getting that money out to people and they're trying to get it fixed, but it may be too late. But that's where they're trying to extend the pause. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and we'll talk about it from there. But if you're looking to start investing, why not start investing with these two super easy to use platforms called Webull and Robinhood. With Webull, you get two free stocks worth up to $1,850. And then if you sign up with Robinhood, you get two free stocks with them worth up to $500. But this is the way you get into investing. Those links are down in the description and they literally is like free money because that's what those stocks are. They have value, they're money. But you can take those stocks, you can either sell them, or you can buy different stocks with them, or you can just sell them and keep the cash. But it gets you into the world of investing, and then that's where you can start getting your money to work and grow for you. And you can reach financial freedom for yourself and those around you. And if you're wondering what stocks to invest in, I personally invest into the S&P 500. It is one stock that is comprised of 500 of the largest companies in the stock market, and it's done phenomenal over the past 30 years. And it's been making a lot of money for a lot of people. And I'm saying, why not you? I have the link in the description where you can go and learn more about it. But I want for Americans to reach financial freedom and not be in debt and not have to live paycheck to paycheck. But if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them from there. But don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all stimulus and economic news that affects you and learn how to build some wealth. This is Joel True Life Investing. Until next time, peace out.